<laughs> yeah. People think certain shows are the best shows on that platform. They're not. Kings of Joburg, we had, we were number one, I think four to six weeks at number one. No one has done that in Africa. No African original on Netflix shows has yeah. done that, has been number one, right? And after being number one, we're still in the top 10, close to two months, right? Yeah. That's, that's breaking records already. Man, we were number one in Jamaica, we were number one all over the fucking world. Yeah. What's up, what's happening guys? Welcome back to SFM Chronicles. My name is Eddie Ramakali and today we've got a very special guest guys. Like this is a this is this is this is a top job. It's in as a game, <laughs> let me tell you. Um, I'm joined by Sabelo Giti and just to introduce him, um, Sabelo, this is a man that hails from Pretoria, an award-winning filmmaker of the year at the VN Global Awards. Um, three-time book author. One which is named the Heart Train, the Heart Train Heist, which is an independent bestseller. A self-taught screenwriter who has written Netflix series Kings of Joburg season one and two, and the Netflix movie Silverton Siege. And then he is also the founder of Pen Game Films, and he's also recently signed with Alta Global Media. That's so, yeah. right. Welcome, champ. Thanks How so much doing, for joining brother? us. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate yeah, it. Bro. Yeah, cool, yeah, cool, man. Firstly, when I excited, you, excited, excited. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, when I first discovered you, it was yeah. it was it was just before Silverton Siege because there was there was this talk about Silverton Siege. Yeah. And but I think that the, the thing is that writers, you guys don't really get that exposure, that exposure recognition. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, that was one of the first things that I actually came across hmm. um, before I even got into writing. So you know, as a kid, I was like always searching for my talent or yeah. what I was passionate about because yeah. for some reason I didn't want to just you know go the normal route go to school um, yeah. study whatever my parents said I'm gonna study I said to myself you know what I'm gonna look for this passion because I didn't know what it was at the time so I did everything and I was lucky enough for my parents to let me explore and do all sorts of things mm. um, and then writing was literally under my nose but I was trying to you know brush it off yeah. And everybody kept telling me, yo, you can write, you can write, you know? And I was like, when I thought about it alone, I was like, hmm, how many cool writers do I know? Do I even know any writers in South Africa? Black, young writers? Mm -hmm. I was like, nah. Not it's, not, it's, it's not cool enough. Yeah, I can't be doing writing. And <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> um, you know, when you think about a writer, you think, old white guy, glasses in the library, yeah, yeah. nobody knows him. Um, but once I started to explore that possibility and I started to discover that I was really good at it yeah. and I actually enjoyed it. Mm. You know, I found myself at 4 a.m. writing short stories and sending them, sending them out to like friends, um, people that I knew, people that my dad knew, my dad was in politics, people that my dad knew and they just came back to me with like great reviews and people are just like wow yo I, yeah. I felt like I was watching a movie and this is a short story about 20 pages or so mm. so that's when the confidence started to develop slowly and then I started to realize okay maybe this is it yeah but I don't want it to be you know the stereotypical writer I don't want that because my personality is more of being out there um if I'm really good at something, I'm going to dedicate myself to it a thousand percent and I want to be the very best in the yeah. industry, not just South Africa or Africa, but in the world. I want to compete. Right. So um, with that being said, I had to kind of mold my talent, my raw talent that I had mm -hmm. with my personality. Right. Oh, okay. So I love chains. I love cars. Yeah. You know, you yeah, saw my whip. Yeah, so, <laughs> hey guys, I'm gonna say, hey, yeah. like the Netflix really pay. <laughs> hey, <laughs> they really pay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, they, right. they need to pay more though. They right. um, yeah, but yeah, man, I love, I love nice things. I love though. You see, I got the Rolex. Jewelry, yeah, 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 yeah. And then, um, so I implemented my personality with my talent. Mm. So, who you see today is that fusion in a sense. So that's why you don't really get a lot of people that know who's behind this, who's behind 
um, this movie or this yeah. show. Mm. And for the first time in the industry, you are seeing someone who is almost in the forefront or someone who's very proud to be a writer mm. and someone who's very well known. I mean, I don't, I don't think the traction that I've had in my career and in my very short career, um, nobody's ever matched in a sense, you know? Yeah, um, that's, so, and, that's so true, yeah, you know, when you yeah. say that, because I was actually discussing this um, uh, earlier with, with our camera guy, Ooh. and I was just saying that, um, you know, you your first feature yeah. was Silverton Siege. Yeah. Like, <laughs> make that make sense. Your first feature film it's crazy, was Silverton bro. Siege. It's crazy, bro. I mean, the my first feature, literally, the first thing that I wrote when I came out of writing novels mm. was Silverton Siege. And this came from, um, okay, wait, let me backtrack. Okay. Let me backtrack. No worries, um, no so how I came into screenwriting was I was getting an interview for my novel called Couch Chain Heist, right? Mm -hmm. By these guys that were interested in what I was doing, blah, blah, blah. And after the interview, these guys are like, yo, do you screenwrite? And I was just like, what the fuck are they talking about? Mm. You know, um, you self you self taught screenwriter. I'm self taught, bro. School. Like two weeks, bro. You don't go to school. You don't go to like two weeks, bro. I wow. downloaded shit off the internet, bro. Wow. Yeah, and I told Shut them that, <laughs> for sure, <Jeez>. bro. <laughs> I told them, no, of course, anything writing, come on, man, mm. can't 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 mess with me, you know. Um, so a week later, I just downloaded some stuff on how to screenwrite. But then it was all about just structure. It's mm. very simple. It's all about structure. I really knew how to tell a story. You understand? Mm -hmm. So it wasn't very far-fetched for me or, or, or difficult. I never had any obstacles in terms of visualizing what should be in a movie or in a picture. Because even in my books, people were like, wow, I'm watching a movie. It's mm -hmm. like watching a movie because I'm very visual. They could like imagine a picture. Exactly. Yeah, 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 the exact yeah, sort yeah. of yeah. very simple, very easy for me. So um, once I did that, I was doing research for some web series that they wanted me to do. Yeah. Um, and... I Googled, had Googled what happened in the 19, in 1980 South Africa. Yeah. And one of the first things that popped up was Silverton Siege. I read three sentences, three guys, rubber bank, because they were part of the ANC, MK, Cadiz, yeah. blah, 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 and hostage situation for about six hours. I was like, light bulb moment. Like, it's a movie. I've got to do this. This is, a, this is a movie. It just, something just told me this is a movie. Mm. And from that point, I started writing it. I think I wrote it for about. Mm. Four or five weeks. Mm. I was done with the first draft. Um, then I just sent it out to a couple of production companies yeah. that I knew. And then um, before I knew it, I got a call, man. Yo, yeah. want to meet up with you? Um, I got called by Wandi Lemolebati, Lemolebati yeah, yeah. who's funny enough, the nephew, nephew yeah, of, of George, George Molebati, yeah. who is the, the commander yeah. of the. <laughs> Jeez, yeah, yeah. come on. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's, that that's is... fate, bro. That's fate, bro. But that that's that's but but I want I want people to also understand is that like I mean many people were always like we waiting for opportunities, you're waiting for people to call you, for channel to call you. Yeah. But what Savello did is that he was doing research on web series, came across a story and he's yeah. like this is gold. And he went and he wrote the script. Yeah. And then he pitched it to Cold Stove, eh? um, It was first uh, Cold Stove, Cold Stove yeah, yeah. Yeah. He pitched it to them. Yeah. And then the rest is history. I mean, you ended up working with Mandla Dube. And, yeah. yeah. I got a call from Mandla. I was so flipping nervous. He was like, yo, man, I really love this first draft. Yeah. Um, and the funny part is, by the way, Mandla was actually, Wandile told me this on the phone. Yeah. So do you know Mandla Dube? He did, um, what is this? Kalushi. Kalushi. So he had planned to do Kalushi. Then he had planned to do, his next film was Silverton Siege. Mm. And then the movie after that was The Ravonia Trial. The Ravonia Trial, yeah. Right. Yeah. That's still coming, I think. That, yeah, that's still coming. Like so that, yeah. at that time, it was like, I think a year or two after Kalushi, and he was about to, you know, embark on that journey for Silverton Siege, yeah. and boom, the script lands on his table. Yeah. So that was just like all of the dots, dots that had yeah. been connecting. And even those dots, though, I just want to tell people that mm. um, it wasn't luck. I had created that luck because I had mm. created the atmosphere to have certain things happen because I was prepared, you yeah. know? It wasn't a thing where I was just sitting at home waiting for something to happen. Thing, yeah. I was actually writing all yeah. the time. You were, you were in the process. I was you know, in the process. Were, I was shopping, bro. Yeah. I was pitching, sending, script, sending yeah, stuff. Pitching, yeah. yeah, It's just like a musician. You know, you can't be a musician and be like, yeah, I've got this one song and you're just sitting. Mm. You have to, even if this year you're not 
um, nobody has pays pays any attention to. Next year you've got something else, or next month you've got something else that yeah. you're throwing out into the market until someone catches. You know, it's like fishing, bro. So you have to be consistent at at all times. So that happened. Next thing, boom, boom, boom. We never even knew Silverton Siege was gonna be a Netflix. Yes, uh, yes, uh, yes. Uh, it was gonna be picked up by Netflix mm. until probably like a year into so development. Fish. Yeah, and fish. and this was like, I think I did like 18 drafts, bro. People don't know. Yeah. The finished product that you see, see? <laughs> the number two <laughs> film on Netflix in yeah. the world. In the world, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was like 18, 19 drafts after that, and then it got picked up by. Funny. Netflix, yeah. and then once it got picked up by Netflix, it was at such a high level. I think I only had to do like one draft. They had like a few notes, mm. and then that was it. And then we signed off on it. Um, a couple months later, next thing we're shooting, bro. And yeah, yeah the rest was history from there. And, and what was it like, man? Because yeah. I respect Mandla Dubey so much. Like he's an animal, oh, bro. Man, Mandla's an animal, him, bro. Like he's. Man, he's 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 train of thought. He's got a film brain. Like I think he's yeah. a. I think he also lectured film at Wits before. He lectured um, film. Yeah. Yeah. He was but a you DOP. Can just, you can just tell. Well, yes, yes, he was a DOP. He was a DOP and he was an assistant yeah. camera assistant on 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 Italian Italian job. Italian job. Bro. Yes, I discovered that when we were at the premiere. Bro. Premiere of Silver <laughs> Siege. I actually discovered that. Yeah. That he was also yeah. that. But like, what what was that experience like? What what yeah. is it? What's so special about working with Mandla? Because yeah. it's I'm sure it's a different experience working with. You know, many not to take away from other directors, of but course. it's probably a different experience. Yeah, it was it was completely different. Well, with with Manja, the the thing was is that we uh, developed a a really close relationship mm. um, early on. You know, from the first time he saw the draft that I had, mm. um, he just kind of took me in. You know, and this mm. was just before um, I was mentored by Shauna Ferguson. Mm. So you know, we were very close. I would be sleeping at his house. We'd be working until like two, three in the morning, mm. talking ideas. So I learned so much from him in terms of cinema, um, not in terms of series per se, but just in terms of how to tell a story um, and on an international level. What people mm. don't understand mm. with Mandela, Mandela grew up. Um, he, well, he went to school in the U.S., right? Yes, yes, uh, yes. To study film, and he developed all of this talent from outside the country but his mind man he's just i think he's one of those people that are just born with a mentality of storytelling mm. how to direct he's a naturally born like even if he didn't go to school yeah he would still be a director that guy is so good and he started off as a dop so even um all these pictures are very visually they're very beautiful mm. um you can see with silverton siege man I was actually just blown away seeing first cuts and seeing the last cut. Mm. Um, it was just, for me, I was just like, okay, I wrote some really dope stuff, but he just took it like to the a little level. bit further. Yeah, yeah you yeah. know, um, and did everything that I kind of wanted to see on the screen. Mm. Because a lot of the times people don't understand, especially as writers, you can write some stuff, but people, you know, dumb down on a lot of things. Sometimes due to budget, sometimes it's just due to the talent of the director. Yeah. You know, um, he's a big scale director. Um, some big scale directors like, for instance, Michael Bay. Mm-hmm. He's a big scale director. He wants to blow shit up. Yeah. Um, I write to blow shit up. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, we can see that in Kills of <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and I get into a lot of trouble for that as well, man. Well, not trouble, but. Because budget. Because of budget, yeah. yeah. People are always complaining, like, behind the scene, like, oh, is that him? Jesus, Jeez, what did dude. you write? Um, even now, I'm, 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 I'm developing a new series. Uh, yeah. Can't get into it yet, but, yeah. um, but this is under my production. I'll tell you the name for it. It's called. Uh, I actually have it down. You've I'll, got I'll, what down? I'll, what is he talking about? I'll tell you the name for it. <laughs> it starts with a C. No. What is that? It, that which okay. one is that? Let me have a look. Let me have a look at that down. <laughs> it's okay. Let me see, see what's going on over here. <laughs> I had it done. I had it done. I'll tell you I'll, if I remember later. I'll tell well, you I've got a couple later. of things going on, but I'm but I'm talking about what I'm talking about is my own um uh deal. I have a, a Netflix deal with uh. Uh, oh, nice. My production company, yeah. Yes, okay. So for the with, first uh, time, Pen Game Films, yeah. with Pen Game yeah. Films, so yeah. for the first time, you know, I'm in control. Um, I'm the boss now. Nice. I'm an executive you producer. In charge, yeah, I'm in yeah. charge. But that's what I was building towards since 
um, Shauna took me in, you know, mm-hmm. um, and became my mentor. And yeah, that's yeah. that's that's the direction so I went to. So this is still in uh, in development, right? That's yeah, right. yeah, yeah, so yeah. yeah, yeah. Like well, yeah, you basically done. But yeah, yeah, well, yeah. You in production? I can't, I can't, I can't well, go into well, detail. Well, you in production or not? I mean, <laughs> I mean, if you in things production are, or not? Let me, let me just say things are happening. Yeah? Things are happening. Is yeah. it? Uh, do you guys? Is it? It's not misfits, is it? No. No, no. what? Miss, miss what? Yeah, no, what no. is that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm but there's also another thing that um that people don't really know is that mm. with Swords and Siege, yeah. that um before like when you guys were still in pre-production, before you actually started shooting, yeah. you guys actually went to the to the grave of the, the trio. The trio, yeah. To ask for is it like for permission? What, what, what yeah. Was that like? yeah. Yeah, so basically, you know, culturally, uh, especially with Manja, Manja is a very cultural person, very spiritual person. Um, it was just a kind of ceremony to um, ask for permission, in a sense, you know, mm. to actually tell their stories because this was actually a very, as much as it was entertaining yeah. and there's guns and blockbuster scenes, um, it was a true story about people that passed away yeah. for the freedoms and the privileges that we have today. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, and the reason why we can actually fucking shoot what we shot. Yeah. Um, these 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 three ANC heroes uh, passed away, and so we Manja felt actually that it was you know out of respect to just to you know go there and. Um, it's the right thing to do though. It's I mean, it's very right, unique though. It's because very I've, unique, bro. I've hardly ever heard of like yeah. like visiting. You know, if I would write, like, if I want yeah. to do a film as well one day of, like, yeah. someone that's passed on, yeah. I think those lessons from what you guys did, I would take that on and do the same thing. Because I think it's... Absolutely. It's giving blessings to it's your project as well. It's giving blessings, bro. Yeah. It's just the same as you would you would ask for blessings from your own ancestors mm. if you embark mm. on a certain thing or if you achieve certain things, right? Mm. Um, and he did that even with, with Kalushi. He did mm. that with Solomon Matangu, right? Um, and obviously, you guys heard about the drama mm. um, that happened afterwards. Other people, uh, other family members came out, went to, you know, City Press and the Sunday Times yeah, and yeah. blah, blah, blah. Um, but, you know, the, as long as, for me, as long as the story got told, um, and I think we told the story in a very unique way and in a very great light because had it been someone else who had written that story, I think we would have had the ordinary struggle film. film yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? And a lot of people actually don't know that out, my intention, first and foremost, was not to create a struggle movie. I just saw this uh, uh, scenario of these three brave guys who were fighting mm-hmm. Um, for what they believed in, and they end up in a bank hostage situation. Yeah. And I saw the entertainment in that, but mm. then obviously doing my research, I went deeper and started to realize what these guys have actually done um, and what they sparked. They sparked the Nelson, Free Nelson Mandela free movement, movement, movement yeah. I mean, which is insane. And then you actually see the progression and the journey from 1980 when that Free Nelson Mandela movement, movement starts started. all the way to 1990, 10 years later, mm. after they had passed away, and you see in my that one of my works. drafts, I had Nelson Mandela just, you know, walking out yeah. with, with Winnie. Oh, wow. And then you just see, you know, this thing started from here and here and here. Yeah. And but that didn't make the... the yeah, well, I had to cut it. <laughs> yeah, shame, yeah. You know how they are. I yeah. had to cut it. I had to cut it. Yeah. Wow, man, that is yeah. so yeah. inspiring. And I yeah. mean... Silver and Siege for me was like out of this world when I saw this. I mean, yeah. I was at the premiere. I was just like, yeah. what? What the fuck is but, going but, on? But I want to know yeah. from your side. I mean, yeah. many people complain about that. Like, oh, we are so sick and tired of these apartheid I heard these that. Not, you know, and that, that was also yeah. a bit of a controversy during the time Silver and Siege came out. Yeah. Um. So, so what, what do you have to say to 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 those people that have you know those those opinions? Uh, that? I think they're talking shit. I don't think they mm-hmm. they know what they're talking about. Um. I think. There are so many stories that are still untold mm. in our country, from our history, our heritage, our culture. I think the people that do say, I, even for me, you know, I won't even, I'll, I'll be honest. Yeah. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of, oh my God, another Nelson Mandela movie is coming out. I'm going <laughs> to the cinema. No, <laughs> I don't want that shit. I'm not even going to do another one. Yeah, okay. Personally. 
By you, the you way, you sure you don't want to do another one? I, I don't think so. Maybe when I'm 50. Okay. Not right now. So now you want I'm to Hollywood now. Else. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I see you got the Hollywood tattoo. Yeah, man. Hey, Come that's on, so man. cool, man. Eh? Like man. you got your. That's yeah. like you wake up every morning you're like this is the dream. Yeah. Eh? I'm this assuming is the that's dream. what it is. Yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah. That's wow. the end goal. Yeah. Yeah, but Hollywood is here actually. And here. And, yes, yes. Yeah, it's not there. But Hollywood's also coming here. It's here. Yeah. 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 yeah it's also the world here. is so much smaller. So, yeah, it's Thanks to Netflix. It's literally, you know, so literally. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, my, my comments to those people is that, especially towards Silverton Siege, they should see Silverton Siege more than just, it's not a political movie. It's not a apartheid movie. movie yeah. It's actually an action film. That that's what it was from the beginning. It was an action film that happened to be true, and the reason why I made it sixty percent um, uh, non-fiction, forty percent fiction, mm. was because of that. I wanted it to be an action blockbuster. You wanted to add that also yeah. like inter- entertainment art Inter- to it, uh, exactly. Art, and yeah, what people do, must, focus, should yeah. also understand, and what they don't appreciate, some people is that. This film is the first film. We have never had a hostage situation kind of film. Do you mm, realize that? Mm, mm, true, true. It's the first of its kind in South Africa. It's the yeah. first of its kind. Yeah. I mean, that's the shit that I grew up on. I grew up on, I'm a 90s movies. Like, that's my favorite decade, 90s. Yeah. Um, you know, Face Off, Speed. Um, oh, yeah, Speed, yeah. Uh, what's, what's that Will Smith one? Um, Enemy Wait, of the State. I don't know, did you, did you draw reference? Yeah. It, um, in terms of the, the hostage situation to like yeah. money heist at any point, did you? No, do, you didn't. Not, not, no, no, not for that. Not for that one. Not yeah. For some, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. I just thought for something else. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> something else that's still coming. We'll see. Okay. <laughs> um, we'll but, see. but with that being said, yeah. Um, I think what? Well, let's let's take it back a bit because yeah, of course. The siege came after, but yeah. I want to chat about uh, Kings of Joburg. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Massive. What? How yeah. did that come about? Yeah. What were you doing on the morning of when this idea or when yeah. Uncle Shaw yeah. approached you? What was going on? <laughs> what was going on? So, um, after I got picked up by Mandla, um, I actually, well, my script, Silverton Siege, mm. was doing its rounds in the industry, right? Mm, um, yeah. So, a lot of producers were hearing about it, a lot of people behind the scenes we're hearing about it mm. and um, I started getting a lot of uh, compliments and calls even from producers saying yo mm. are you the guy who wrote Soft and Siege this is before the final draft even right so yeah. it was already starting to pick up yeah so now I'm like shit okay we got something here mm. and um, even the comments man they were just out of this world but I got picked up by um, uh, it was this Dumi, Dumi Gumbi. Okay, he did. Really he produced really nice. um, Love Lives Here. He's got a couple I, I of. Know, couple okay, of I know Love Lives Here. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so he was really interested in my talent and wanted me to jump on a few projects of his. Um, but then there was one project that he was collaborating on with uh, producer Samar Davis. Yeah. The yeah, American. Yeah. The director also. The director so, oh, also of Kings of, of Joburg yeah, yeah. and director on his own. Mm. Um, so he's like, yo, this guy wants to meet you. He's been having interviews with writers, but they're not making the cut. So, um, people aren't making a cut. So this is like his third or fourth, right? Yeah. And, uh, Konja, there's no ice. Yeah, sorry. So then he approaches you? So he approaches me. Um, so I have a meeting with Samar. Samar Davis uh, basically kind of interviews me at Starbucks. At <laughs> Starbucks? <laughs> yeah. That's it all started. Yeah, yeah, at Starbucks. And then he's busy kind of interviewing me and kind of trying to fill me out. Um, he tells me what the project's about. I give him my thoughts. Mm. Of course, and we just connected in that in that regard. Yeah. And he's just like, I think you you're the one that gets it, like right there on the spot. Yeah, he's got that accent. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, You know the American accent. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, he's got that accent. He really does. Yeah. And he's like, all right, cool. I think you're the one. Blah blah blah. Um, let's get it. Mm. And then obviously, you know, we talk money. I was like, all right, cool. We'll talk. Uh, we'll carry on this conversation after the deal's done. Blah blah blah. And then about 
not even a month, man. Like three weeks later. I think this was in even December yeah. of was it 2018? I can't even remember, man. Everything just happened so fast. 2018 or something like that. Um, he calls me from Atlanta. I don't mm. know if he was in New York or Atlanta. He calls me saying, "Yo, um, I'm, I want to represent you as my as as your manager. I want you to I want to sign you to my management group. Yeah. Blah blah blah. We're based here, the side, whatever, whatever. And part of the reason for that is that I told him my goals. It's like, yo, man, I'm just, I'm not." I'm not, I'm big time. I'm not mm. taking it to local the, level. Yeah. I'm trying to take it international, you know, mm. and I'm going to Hollywood. Mm. Either you come with me or you find me there. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Intentional. Yeah. 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 So he's like, yo, I'm trying to sign this kid. So he's like, yo, I want to sign you, blah, blah, blah. He literally spoke to my dad that evening. Right. And um, my dad's like, okay, he's going to speak to his lawyer, blah, blah, blah. Then they sorted out the contract. So I, I signed a deal. I think it was a year deal. Okay. Yeah, 12 months. 12 yeah. month management deal. And then he's the one that connected me with Shauna Ferguson. Ah. So once I got linked to Shauna, um, Shauna and I just clicked. Like mm. it was one of those things where um, it was fate because mm. we're literally almost the same in a sense. Yeah. But there's certain things that we, yeah. that are very completely opposite you know mm. um shauna is a born producer people like talking about his acting they see him on tv mm. but shauna ferguson is a producer to the core like it's in his blood he was born to be a producer mm. he knows how to manage people he knows how to manage productions he knows how to manage money he knows mm. how to manage uh, um talent. schedule talent casting everything right yeah um that's the reason why he was successful and um so he took me under his wing. Um, I think he saw that we're kind of alike in a sense and we like the same things, you know? Mm. Um, and I learned a lot from him, but he took, took me under his wing and I just embraced that. You know, I just soaked everything in that I could. Um, the only difference between him and I literally was, and this is from him, he told me this, yeah. the only difference between you and me Besides the fact that we like to dress the way we like, we like bling, yeah. <laughs> we like nice cars, yeah. <laughs> and all of these things, is that there's two differences. Shauna, he's like, my mind is the same as yours, but I just can't write. Mm. But his ideas, So bro, you were the missing piece of the puzzle. In a sense. In a, yeah, in a yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. You know, because he's got the producer mind of, yeah. he can come up with ideas, bro, for a show, like right now. He'd be like, mm. shit. I know what to do, blah, blah, blah. I just need someone to put it on paper. Yeah. You know? And then, you, and then yeah. I have the mind of a producer because I can also come up with ideas, but yeah. I can put them down. I can literally yeah, write. Yeah, yeah. But what he pay, has, yeah. his difference between him and I is managing certain things like finance. Mm. He is so intricate and so detailed about that. And that's what I had to learn from him yeah so those were the differences between us but in terms of you know oh shit i want to cause i think this role is for this person this character is for this person mm. there was literally a time bro um we we're talking about kings of Joburg from episode one i was writing by the way i must still go back in terms of how what i had to go through in terms of kings no, of Joburg worry, season two. Don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> so now um there was a moment where I was writing episode one, right? Yeah. And there was a character for a bad cop, a new cop that would be able to take down the Masiria family. The the, the, the new cop in is this for season two, right? Yeah, for season yeah, two, yeah. right? So, who we're speaking yeah, about, yeah. So now I'm as I'm writing and I'm sending him stuff. I'm sending him the script. I'm sending him everything. And I'm like, an idea came to mind. I was like, fuck. No, as I'm writing it, and I'm friends with Tapelo, right? So I'm like, yeah. oh, dope, shit. Dope, dope. I'm like, shit. I call Shana. Yo, big bro, what up? I think I know who should fucking play uh, Detective Kata. Yeah. Who? What are you thinking? Tapelo Maguena. He's like, what the fuck? This is weird, bro. I'm like, what do you mean? I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> you no know what ways. I mean? Yeah, bro. That's how like we're the same in that regard, bro. Yeah, Even yeah, bro. We're we're really in sync, bro. Yeah. Like really in sync in terms of our thinking, in terms of everything. And I was just like, what? You know, I literally had goosebumps. 
when when I spoke to him. I was like, <laughs> I was too. <laughs> it was like half past ten at night. Yo. Yeah. Yeah. And Damn, dude. stuff like that, bro. Stuff like that. So it was really um, a great relationship that I had, man. I owe a lot to him in terms of even my ambition, in terms of me striking deals, in terms of how I carry my career and how I carry myself. Mm. Um, yeah. Sean Ferguson played mm. a huge role in, Damn, in, in, in who I am. And I actually yeah. want to ask you about, yeah. like, um, like, like what, were you, what was happening, I mean, on the day yeah. that he passed away, bro? Like, yeah. that must have hit you hard. Because I know yeah. he was, like, a mentor to you as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, at first, uh, I was in denial almost. Mm. Um, as would all be. like two Yeah, everybody yeah, was like, every, huh? Yeah, nah. Yeah. Um, I tried to make a couple calls, you know, of course. Um, I couldn't get through and then my dad actually called me and he was like he didn't have to say anything because I, I got like probably like over 100 calls bro that yeah, day yeah I can my imagine. phone was buzzing bro yeah. it was going crazy bro mm. like a drug deal <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was going crazy like a drug dealer so um, at some point I just switched like I, I wasn't answering any calls then my dad called me obviously I'm gonna answer my dad and when I picked up, I was like, yo, what's up? Uh, call him, sir. Like, yo, what up, sir? And he's like, I'm sorry. That's what he said. And then I just knew, you know? Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. Broke down, bro. And I oh. just, and I, something just told me that, okay. When I heard it from him, I just knew, you know? I heard it from a couple people, other people like, nah, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. But when I heard it from him, I just knew. And then, yeah, man, it was crazy, bro. It yeah. was crazy. And and in terms of luck with that, um, had before Uncle Short passed away, had yeah. you already written season two, Kings of Joburg script? Yeah. Crazy. Now this is the interesting <laughs> now this crazy. is the interesting question I wanna ask yeah. you. Yeah. Is that so now how how do you how do you, how do you adapt? Because I mean yeah. this is someone that is reading your plans yeah. and now this is life, you know, an yeah. unfortunate event happens. How how do you adapt to that? How do you you uh, know like yeah, it's crazy. Let me tell you. Do you all rewrite the whole thing? What happened? Let me tell you the story. Let me okay. tell you the story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, January, wasn't it Uncle Shopas? 2021. January 2021, mm. we start writing KOJ2. Mm. Um, I think by f- April, yeah, end of April, I'm done yeah. with the whole season for season two. Damn. It's black. It's insane, bro. Shana and I are looking at each other like, mm, mm, mm. you thought season out. one was shit. They're not <laughs> yeah. ready, bro. Um, we literally took it to another level, bro. Mm. And I could feel it. He could feel it as well. We sent it to Netflix. Netflix came back and he was like, he calls me one one night. Yo, I just got we just got the green light yeah. for everything. Yeah. We're done, nigga. And he's like, of course. Nice. Like they came from you, bro. Yeah. Of course, we done. I was like, shit. All right, cool. We're about to shoot, you know. And then, um, and obviously, we all know he was the lead on mm-hmm. KOJ. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Huge part in KOJ. That was his baby, man. And that was his independent. His actually first complete independent project, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that he shot himself, own money, mm. bars, nigga. I'm talking about bars, nigga. Putting bars of your own cash. Can imagine that. Yeah, it man, it's, a lot. It's, it's one of yeah. the first. That guy's yeah. a legend, bro. He's a goat, bro. Nobody does that, bro. Nobody Shit. does that, bro. No, no one that I know has had a sh- shot a show solely on his cash, his own money. Mm. You know Damn. what I mean? That nigga took it out of his own pocket, man. He's a goat. So and Damn. he believed in this shit. So, it meant so much to him. I mean, to, yeah, to bro. take money out of your own pocket to put into it. Yeah, bro. It yeah. was crazy, yeah. bro. So now. Um, Things happened, blah, blah, blah. I think two months later, then obviously, you know, um, he left us. Yeah. And now there's just obviously confusion, there's sadness. Um, I'm confused myself. Yeah. You know, I've just lost my mentor, Mentor, my leader. And what people don't actually know is that I was, you know, obviously flying under his wing. So I'm at a place in my career as well where I don't have direction necessarily you know Mm. um i've been taught all of the stuff that i know and what i should be doing but obviously you know i just lost the man right yeah and now um a couple months later 
No, not even a couple months later, but a month later, Sis Connie calls me up and she says, listen, don't worry about nothing. This is what I will always owe to Sis Connie and I will always show love to Sis Connie is because she said, listen here, um, don't worry about nothing. Things mm. carry on as they should, yeah. as, as they always were. You know, so she made me feel really comfortable and assurance, real yeah. safe assurance, bro. So I was just really happy to have that. Um, and we grew closer after okay, after yeah, Shana because yeah, yeah. we were not that close before, right? Because um, you were also like Shana's son in a way, like in a yeah, in a way, yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. He treated me like that. Like he yeah, treated like me his like own that. son. Yeah, he treated me like that in every aspect that you can think of. You know, mm. um, he gave me the secrets, bro. He gave me the recipes, bro. Yeah. yeah, he gave me the recipes. That's why I am where I am today. Um, that's why I, I'm going to, to that top. place. Yeah, you yeah. know where it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, anyways, um, so now we're at a place where we gotta rewrite. Mm. Um, and Netflix is waiting, right? Season two. What are we gonna do? Because everything that happens in the show well, the, surrounds the, Simon the, Masiru, yeah, yeah. which is Shona's character. So I had to go back into the lab and think about how the hell I'm gonna, you know, make it as great of a show mm-hmm. as it was, as I knew it was. So something happened in that period where I went back, um, I just stripped everything apart, started from scratch. And I had to literally start from scratch the whole season. And by True. the way, this is the first time that Netflix Africa, where one writer is given uh, ownership of writing the whole entire mm, season. So freedom to like... Alone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And before Shana even went, mm. before he passed away, I was writing the whole season. And now I'm still writing the whole season. So, you know, even in like things like Blood and Water, blah, 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 all these yeah. series that you see, it's uh, every episode is different writers. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is the first time where it's like, Shana was like, I just want subs. Subs, do your thing, do thing yeah. kill it. You know what I mean? So I had to start from scratch. I ripped everything apart, and then I started from the beginning. And by the end of writing every draft of each episode, by the end of the season, I found myself looking at a series that was even better than what Shana and I had created, yeah. which is what's about to drop. drop. On the 27th. Seven. So fucking of buckle Jan. your seatbelts. On Netflix. <laughs> on Netflix. Today's baby. date is the 18th of yeah. Jan. Yes. Um, I can assure you that this episode is only going to drop after the 27th of Jan. Yeah. With that being said, <laughs> with that being said, yeah. um, I've watched season two already. Of King mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't know if you've watched it already. Uh, come on, man. Okay. Come on, man. What you talking okay, no, about? Awesome. Um, Shay, man. So, like, you know what I was saying? Like, I, I yeah. always thought, you know, coming into before I watched it, I was like, like, it was really interesting to see because I had a sense of me, like, you know, like you mentioned, that, like, surely the script is written, so they probably had to change a few things. So did you, Not a few, bro. Did you had to a change lot, everything. Bro. So, there's, lot, so, there's, so is there anything, was there like, a few, you know, things. few things from the first script Absolutely. that you included in the second Absolutely, one? yeah. Mm. So there were things that were there, but you know, with storytelling, for instance, if a character does one thing, everything is intentional, bro. Yeah. A character doesn't go through a door, for instance, mm. for no reason. Mm. You know, a character won't punch another character for no reason. Yeah. So everything has an effect, cause and effect in story, bro. Cause mm. and effect. So with Shana being lead, everything had to change. There were some storylines that were kind of the same mm. that I kept, but they took a different journey now yeah you yeah. know what i mean so that was there were there were there was a lot of um smaller stories that did remain but took on a different journey, journey. different characters came in um mm. but it was completely different to what i had planned for season two initially mm. um but i honestly feel like this is the best mm. version of it yeah. I want to touch a bit on on, on the mermaid. Yeah. I, I initially thought in season one, I mean, when when the trailer and everything came out, you know, everyone was like, oh, this, 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 this mermaid. Yeah. Like, is it CGI or something like that? Yeah, yeah, CGI, yeah. CGI, yeah. I'm like, damn, this is dope, you know? But yeah. I don't think we saw the mermaid enough. Um, and, in, <laughs> and in season two again, I was like to myself, I was like, I want to, 
like you know even now i feel mm. like like why why don't we see more of the mermaid like yeah. yes the mermaid plays in a role with protecting um Mo, yeah. the Syria this it's time course, you know? yeah. but 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 like fr- from a writing perspective like yeah. the people want to see the mermaid do, do things yeah so, so why aren't you giving us more of that um i felt like you know there was a point in time when i was while i was writing right um i felt like i have expanded a lot uh, even from the trailer, mm. when people see the trailer, um, you can see that it's more supernatural than season one. There's mm. more of the mermaid. There's more of the blue, mm. right? Okay. Yeah. Um, it's just that I was a little bit more limited to what I could do and how, how far I could go uh, uh, because see. of certain you know entities and whatnot. Yeah. Um, because I wasn't that much in control, you know? Yeah. yeah um, okay. But I hear what you're saying, mm. and I love what you're saying. But I think I did do a good job in terms of taking it a bit further um, with regards to the powers, the mermaid. Because everybody also, you know, there was, even as I was watching... By the way, I only came into season one, the last two eps. Oh okay. Oh, you went to you went to I, the I was not the, yeah. the, the the guy who wrote the whole season. Oh okay. So yes, season yes. two, like happened. you just said, yeah, yeah, they yeah season two exactly, for yourself, bro. Before they would split it up. Okay, exactly, yes, bro. Yes, yes, makes so sense. I was brought in only at the end of season one. Yeah. Five and six, episode five and six. six yeah. So those were the two most highest rated episodes. Yeah. That's the reason why Shana was like. Mm. Fuck that subs take over. Yeah. Because you killed the the whole fucking series See, yeah. on those two episodes. Yeah. So that's why I had the responsibility. And it was a lot of pressure, of course. It's a lot of responsibility. Taking on a whole season and it's obviously extended. Mm. Uh, I hope this is gonna be shown after the No, it's coming after twenty seven. <laughs> no, I did yeah. I did say that it's gonna yeah. be after twenty seven. So yeah. now it's like obviously expanded to eight episodes, right? Yeah. So um more responsibility, more weight. And especially at the time when Shannon was still here, it's way more pressure because now you got to impress. Mm. Now you have to raise the bar to such a place where take it higher, you yeah. got to take it higher, bro. Yeah. And, and you know, with what Kings of Joburg did in season one, guys, let me break it down for you. People think certain shows, I'm not going to mention those shows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. People think certain shows are the best shows on that platform, they not. Kings of Joburg, we had, we were number one, I think four to six weeks at number one. No one has done that in Africa. No African original Netflix shows has yeah. done that, has been number one, right? And after being number one, we're still in the top 10, close to two months, right? Yeah. That's that's breaking records already. Man, we were number one in Jamaica. We were number one all over the fucking world, bro. Mm. So um, it did, it was, it was, I think we've got the viewers and a lot of fans that watched. That but enjoyed. That's y- what's come back for season two, of that's, course. Yeah, <laughs> and it's, it's taken so long mm. and there was drama in between and all of the stuff. And a stuff, lot of happening. There's a lot of ha- yeah. stuff happening. So with that being said, you know, when you're given responsibility to write the season two, and take it even higher than that. Yeah. There's a lot of pressure on your shoulders. So I had to come with my A game, of course. Yeah. But that's what I do every day. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And would we, will we ever see... Um, sorry, I'm, I'm on this mermaid case. Yeah. But I know this is something that a lot of people are going to be asking. Of course. <laughs> so of course. will we ever see the origins of it? Because in season two, um, we see that it come from the Maseri mother. Yes. Um, but... Like, so it does, is, it a, is it a generational thing that's been passed on from... Uh, is it that, or did it just start with the specific, with the Maseri mother? It starts with the mother. It starts with the mother. It starts with the mother. And then it got passed on to um, Simon. Simon, then now it's passed yeah. on to, yeah. to Mo. Yes, yeah. so it starts yeah. with the mother. Um, if you want more of the backstory, I guess, um, it's something that could be discussed in season three. Okay, fair. Yeah. So we're getting hints, guys. Here is from Chronicles. We're giving you guys content <laughs> on what to expect, what's going to be happening, yeah. you know, in the future. Yeah. And that. Um, okay, no, cool, perfect. Yeah. And then I want to actually say that I'm very proud of you. Thank you. Because, bro. you know, you're actually a young writer. You yeah. See? If you if you actually think about it, like you 
especially you know in South Africa, you're actually a young writer, and to have produced uh, two two seasons of of a Netflix series and a film, and yeah. I mean, you've also done um, like a drama series, and you know also an author through book. Like guys, do you understand? <laughs> do you know what I mean? We struggle to read. This guy has written three books. <laughs> Hey, you you written three books. I just want to yeah, say that, like, I'm, yeah. I'm very proud of you in that sense. Thank you, bro. Um, and I want to know, uh, with, you know, with being an author, did, yeah. did, there's 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 uh, the, the way that a plot twist happens in in the season, um, uh, you, the you, season of King Kings of Kings of Jovia. Yeah. yeah, you you you're so good at it. It reminds yeah. me like a, a bit of a like a bit of a Nolan because you can you you in, in terms of there's a plot that happens with the detective yeah um where we think that this person is against the mysterious can't the detective is a mysterious yeah so yeah. you know how to you keep us engaged you keep yeah. us you keep us you yeah. keep us like oh yeah. they're about to catch them about to catch them yeah. then uh, bang, and this bang. person actually yeah. is a mysterious <laughs> and yeah. you know like like you test loyalty t- test yeah. family and friendship like, I love that you that you recognize style. it. Tell yeah. us about your writing style of that. I mean, like, how, yeah. You know, um, so I just want to know yeah. about that. Sorry, 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 I'm so excited just to know about that. I can that. tell. I can tell. Yeah. You're getting me excited. Um, it's 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 complicated in a sense. Um, it's something that I had to develop, obviously, over years um, of writing, of watching good film and bad film, um, and also just my natural instinct right um a lot of people you know they don't see writing as a talent like being a singer Mm. or being a not everybody's gonna be cristiano ronaldo Mm. you know there's gonna be soccer players bro yeah there's still uh uh, name me a soccer player man um just uh, neymar okay maybe yeah neymar is a little bit up there but he's not there there Okay, um, Bruno Fernandes. Bruno Fernandes. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's going to be a Mang Mang, a defender that's they actually call yeah. uh, a Drogba, who's really good, but he's not a great, right? Mm. Um, so there's levels to this in terms of the talent, right? Uh, but even if you do have talent, you still have to work and hone your craft, right? Mm. And for me, it's still, I, I treat it the same way. That's why I'm so competitive, bro. I'm probably the most competitive person out yeah, here. Ever, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and people don't know that. They'll be like, ah, he's a writer. He does movies and whatever. I watch the most movies. I watch movies from the 40s, the 30s, bro. Mm-hmm. I know the history of Hollywood, for instance. I know the history of South African film. I watch films from, I love the the 80s decade, the 70s decade, the 90s decade, in terms of action films. Um, I won't, I won't, uh, uh, going you know, that, yeah. yeah, in terms of, you know, or going to other genres or whatever. But in terms of what I do, um, I've tried to be a master and a student of what I do. Yeah. So with regards to, you know, working extremely hard, bro, um, I work extremely hard. I'm that person at 4 a.m., you know, I'm, I'm writing. Mm. You won't catch me catching Z's. <laughs> I'm writing, man. I'm in my office at home. There's a movie playing on one screen. There's music that could be playing. Maybe I got some jazz. Sometimes hip hop. Sometimes you know Nipsey Hussle's playing some motivational shit. Yeah. But I'm on my keyboard. I'm here. And then my screen is here. Got yeah. another big screen here in front of me, and I'm growing. And I got the fucking Hollywood big ass uh, uh, poster on my on my wall. Yeah. You know, all my favorite films and blah, blah, blah. I'm obsessed with this shit, bro. Like, yes, I love yeah. it. I want to be number one. That's the reason why I am where I am. And I, I'm, I'm trying to get all these accolades. And mm. no one's competing with me. And then when you say, like, who are you competing with, sir? Like, who's number two then? Yeah. Who is number two? <laughs> no, but I love the confidence that, yeah. you, that you show in that. Yeah. Um, and I, actually, you mentioned a very good example, which yeah. I want to adapt into... The, uh, into the season of Kings of Joburg and you know you mentioned that uh, like a person like like a Bruno Fernandes yeah who's a good player 
a, a, a very but, skilled but, player. But, but maybe can't take it to maybe in the next years he will, but we never know. But currently, can't but he take can't it take it to, it to Messi. That Ronaldo Messi level. Yeah. Right. Okay. And and by the way, now obviously Messi Ronaldo they different okay, levels. Okay, Messi of course. Yes. Yeah. Now that's that's the goat. <laughs> I, 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 don't agree. I I was I was I'm a Ronaldo fan because of the yeah. work ethic. My, my, me too. Yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah, and yeah. obviously the talent, but Messi had the talent. Had but the talent, now yeah. I think there's a bit of a difference. Yeah. Because of the World Cup. The World Cup. Yeah. Yeah. But but also I wanna I wanna make it I wanna use a yeah. different um player in terms of like look at let's just say Eden Hazard at Chelsea how sublime he was and I know Chelsea is a big you, team then, then you take him to, to Madrid, Madrid and he's, he hasn't he's performed. on the bench yeah now, this is what and I'm gonna bring that back into the context okay. of Kings of Jericho yeah. too in terms of a character and yeah. it's not his fault yeah so I just wanna clarify that I've got not, no agendas against someone but it's just something that I picked up. And that was with um, Simon, uh, played by Zolisa Kaluva. Yeah. Previously, when I've watched him in other productions as a supporting actor. Mo, you mean? Um, sorry. By Zolisa. Yeah, sorry, sorry, Mo, Mo Masiru, yeah. Sorry, sorry, my bad. Um, yeah, Zolisa plays Mo. Yeah. Previously, in other productions that I've watched him, he's been probably the best in the country supporting uh, actor. Yeah. Right? But coming into this season of season two, I think he was good. Um but I think the lead role, it was kind of, I don't want to say it weighed heavy on him, but it, it to a certain extent, it looked like, like it, it's a lot for him, you know, to take on a sole lead role and to also be taking a role that was, um, that was by uh, Uncle Show, you know, as well. Of course, um, yeah. So that's just, that's just my observation that, that I picked up. And it, it's, it's that thing of like, sometimes you can be the best supporting actor. And this is for, for everyone else. Facts. It's okay to be... A supporting actor. actor yeah. Um, Number two. Not everybody has to be a lead. Yeah. You know? um, so, so do you, do you understand where I'm coming Beautiful. from? Beautiful. That was brilliant. You know, it's, it's I, just... I, I completely agree with you with regards to um, your thought process in terms of mm. not everybody's supposed to be a lead. To be, yeah, yeah. Um, some people are great at supporting. Yeah. Some people get Oscars from supporting. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, I really do agree with you. Uh, I won't go into detail, but no shame. I don't want you Mo's to go into character. that side. That's just my observation, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was your opinion. I think I think he did a great job. I really do. Um, I think he had some big shoes to fill. Yes, of course. yes, big yes. shoes to fill. Um, but I I also wanted to take that character burden off of him in a sense by bringing him in other. Um, very strong characters or very strong uh, lead actors or supporting mm. actors um, such as Yukani Ferguson yes, and yes. and Silo uh, Silo Mage um, etc etc but you know going back to what you said it makes perfect sense it makes mm. it makes perfect sense with regards to um, how people are made or kind of go into the direction of this is what you're supposed to be doing mm. instead of this. Not everybody obviously can climb the mountain yeah, to, bro, yeah, to yeah. get to the top. Not everybody's Usain Bolt. Some guys yeah. are fast, but they're not Usain Bolt fast. Yeah. And that's just, that's nature. That so, is so just it's nature. okay to be a supporting actor and to be a very, to be very good at it. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and it's also obviously a test to someone's character. Some people do have ambition, bro. Yes, Some people course, have the course. biggest ambition like and yeah. they will get to that stage, you know, yeah, where yeah. it's like, okay, it's time to go against Mayweather. I know I'm going to be the one who knocks him out finally. Hmm. And he's been, this guy's been knocking out guys. And then when he gets there, he realizes this guy is different. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, I'll be number two. Yeah. Yeah, and in terms of casting, do you yeah. do you have a I mean we spoke to we, we actually were on a set for Kings of Joburg season yeah. two yeah. doing behind the scenes and we spoke yeah. to Lestady, the casting director, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um but but do you do you also have an input on, on like I mean as a writer on who must get casted for certain Not unless I'm a producer, no. Oh so you don't you so you um, so you don't have any control Well, that? I mean, yeah, it depends. It depends. You see, because my big brother mm. Uh, Shana Ferguson wasn't mm. there. Um, I didn't necessarily have that direct influence, but the one thing that I did get through um, in terms of casting was Tapelo Mukwin. Mm. 
Okay. Um, yeah, top so he was, man. he was, oh. yeah, man. He was, oh, yeah, for boss. me, <laughs> for me, he was the role that he's taking on now. I wrote it for him because mm. I know him. Mm. I literally know him as a person. And I was like, this, when I'm writing it, I was like, mm. I have this you in mind. Godly. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that was the only one. Um, but in terms of being a writer on your own for a series, even a series like Netflix, you don't necessarily have that, but unless you have a great relationship with um, the bosses, the producers, mm. Mm. unless you're a producer yourself, then you don't have that control. The, per- the people that have control are the producers, yeah. not the casting directors. Do you think it's the casting directors? Yeah, yeah, casting directors are there to say, yo, this is what we got. These are the 10 for this role. Mm. The they producers. come to producer. If I'm producer, well, I am producer. They come to me and be like, okay, these are the 10, yeah. cut it to five. These are the five, cut it to three. I want that one. Yeah. And the producer, uh, casting director will tell that person that we've got, you've got that work. Why is a writer? Yeah. You can give me some intel. Yeah. Uh, with Pumzi's character, which is a, this is an undercover cop. Yeah. Why on earth would an undercover cop be having a baby with an ex-convict? And getting married as well. He's <laughs> breaking it down for me. All right, cool. So, you know, with character, right? Yeah. Um, some characters, obviously, we've seen this before. Some characters go in too deep in terms of their undercover agenda. Yeah. Um, some people get caught up. Some people are in too deep for too long. And some people even forget that they are undercover. We've yeah. seen that a lot of times, not just in real life but in fiction especially so when i played around with um the pumsy character i saw the genuine connection that they had between the two of them Mm. and i exploited that so it became a thing where if we're gonna actually expose her as a undercover police officer or detective um I want to know, or the audience would want to know who this person is and why they're doing this. And I thought perhaps the best way to do that, to find out who she is as a character, is through Mo, the person Mm. that she's constantly in contact with. Now, that contact and that exchange over time obviously develops into something else because initially she's supposed to be the one who lures Mo into a relationship yes, yes and then it actually becomes a relationship and she has a job to do but over time things get very complicated ends up exposing herself yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yeah. Yeah. yeah but she does cover up for herself as you see mm. in season two she covers up for herself um and she kinds of you know does certain measures put certain measures in place to cover her tracks so that her um end goal can still you know be achieved yeah. but obviously um at this point if she is pregnant what is she gonna do yeah she does go to the abortion clinic yes. and think, <laughs> think of Fuck, it, yeah. this is actually fucked up now <laughs> you know <laughs> i like, made a mistake what are you doing? <laughs> exactly. yeah. i want to question some of the character decisions and yeah. other alternatives that that could have been explored because yeah. um, I think it would be nice for viewers who actually watch to actually mm. know that like okay the writer went with this decision but this was the other alternative yeah um in terms of with uh, with the, with the Simon's character of course we see that he gets um well it looks like he gets killed by Mo and gets buried by Mo and then like <laughs> Mo's yeah. secretive about it throughout the whole series and that's, yeah. the, that's the thing I was saying about you like you you can you can yeah. wind us up and you keep us going and going and going and then, yeah. you know, Drop boom. A bomb. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Eventually they, they find the body or whatever. But what yeah. is the other alternative that you had in mind um, uh, to kill off uh, Simon's character? Um, honestly speaking, the first, it wasn't, the f- initial story was not to kill off Simon. Yes, yes, yes. You, yes, you know that, yes, right? Yes, um, So obviously Simon had power. Um, he wasn't supposed to die. Yeah. Um, but then obviously things happen in reality and then we decided okay you know what this is the best way to carry the story forward yeah. and funny enough it actually made sense once Simon is gone and 
if you kill him yeah. and you, ref- you you blood, you inherit that, what he yes. what he oh, has, right? Yes, so that's, that is, that is yes, the yes, intricate yes. detail. Oh. Um, it's not like ooh, Sipo from next door can come in and be like, yo, Mo, shh. <laughs> and Mo's dead now. I've got the yeah. power. Yeah. He, he, it can't. It can't happen that way. So it's very spiritual, very blood bonded, very family oriented. Mm. So this curse and this power is actually connected through blood. That's why you can't just kill any kid. You've got to kill yeah. your kid, or you have to sacrifice your kid if um, you want the power to continue. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Last question on Kings of Joburg before we move yeah. forward. Yeah. Um, which character did you have the most fun um, writing? <laughs> uh shit. This is a hard question. Good question, but hard question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let me think. Let me think. Okay, take your time. It, it is a hard decision. <laughs> it is because it I is. mean, and it's not nothing personal with anyone. Yeah. It's personal, yeah. Like, you know, I really enjoy. Um, suspense and thriller and developing characters um so i think there were few but i think my most the most fun i had was with um the connie character oh yeah veronica Uh, Veronica. yeah yeah. um she was obviously a new character Mm. and she was the character that linked to simon yes so that was really great and what was also great was playing with the children characters the flashbacks the right flashbacks of oh, all the kids yeah. was really fun because now i can actually really build and construct how why these people are the way they are and mm-hmm. also construct new uh kind of um personalities or traits or habits or whatever the case may be so that they can go further you know mm-hmm. and things that you don't know the audience doesn't know about them they're going to start to discover and it's because of how they were as children or the experiences that they went through. Yeah. Um, that was really fun. So it was the children, it was Veronica. Um, who else? Damn, I'm drawing blank. Zaza? It was probably... I, I, I like Zaza. I, oh, maybe Zaza, I Zaza, Zaza, I, Zaza, Zaza, Zaza I, I, I really enjoyed season one. Season one, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. really enjoyed her in season one. Oh, Angela. Angela. I really like playing yeah. with Angela. Samuels, yeah. yeah, I really like playing with Angela. I really like playing with um, the Kata, Detective yes, Kata yes. Uh, story f- to, to, to a point. Yeah. Um, who else? What about Clo? Clo? <laughs> Clo was Clo was always a great, like, for me, it's like I just draw from, like, he brings personal life. experience. Like, <laughs> yeah. yo. And I know the guy. I know TK. So yeah, I'm yeah. like, He's really good at this. So it just comes naturally to me, you know? Yeah. Even the words, everything. That comes really, really natural. Um, it's always fun to play, uh, to write uh, Toto. Um, yeah, man. But even Mo, um, his transition as well. Mm. I've just, I, I don't always, I never have a certain character that I can choose and say, I really enjoyed this one because Specifically, of, yeah. because the way I build story in my mind and how it comes to paper is, everything i'm moving like different 100 different pieces at the same time mm. so i just really enjoy that process That's, more yeah. than a single puzzle mm. if there's 20 puzzles i actually like playing with 20 puzzles opposed to one puzzle so yeah. for me that's the game that's yeah. that's the enjoyment you know it's not like if you're watching soccer um i don't enjoy the free kicks Okay, yes. You know, or just the goals. You want to... Um, Yeah, I love how the build-ups are. I love how certain guys defend. Mm. I love how certain guys run. I love the whole game. Mm. And um, for me, man, as a writer, you know what a writer is? A writer, a great writer, is a person that um, I manage things very well. And I can see things, I can organize very well. Mm. So Mm. even in real life, if I have to organize certain things, I'm able to put certain things in a certain department, put this here, place this here, place this here. These things should work together. That's yeah. what writing actually is. Yeah. Um, okay. It's really organizing and being strategic and not forgetting, oh, because you put this juice here, 
The reason why you put it here is because this person that came from here is going to spill, going to bump this over to cause this effect and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. So you have to be very strategic and know how to organize things. Damn, yeah, so, so that's what I enjoy. Um, yeah. I'm really good at that. I'm yeah. really, really good you, at that. So see, that, what it looks like is that you're very attentive to detail. Yes, you know, yeah. And I mean, as a writer, you've got to be. Yeah. <laughs> you have to. Yeah, you've got Otherwise, to. Otherwise, oh, shit. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. anyway, so we've got some questions from uh, our cronies. And basically, yeah. uh, I'll just ask people, like, listen, any questions here for Solom Giti? And they sent through some questions. Okay. So I just picked up a few. Okay. And also, guys, I just want to say that if you're not a member of the channel, please do click the join button to become a member. There's different packages, uh, with the highest one being a first class crony. And a first class crony, you stand the chance to whichever celebrity we interview or um, cast and crew member in the film industry interview, you will be able to come and join us on the set and actually meet and greet them. So yeah, please do join as a member. Uh, but yeah, questions from the super cronies. The first one is, what's your mantra to keep longevity in the film industry? Hard work, bro. Consistency. Mm -hmm. Consistency is longevity. For me, um, being consistent, being persistent, uh, being disciplined in what you do. You know, um, I hear a lot of talk about, especially with writers or creatives, some, sometimes you don't, you don't have it. You don't have it every day. I don't wake up every day like I've got the next big idea. It doesn't, doesn't happen like that. But I show up every single day. I show up, um, I'm at, on, on that computer. You know, mm -hmm. um, I'm, I've got I've got pen to paper every single day, and even if it's half a page, opposed to a hundred pages, sometimes sometimes I can f write out the whole script. You know, I've I've written out a whole film, a film script, in under a week, a couple of days, yeah. like three or four days, yeah, because I was so into it. Sometimes it'll take longer than that, but mm -hmm. I'm sitting down every day dedicated to what I'm supposed to do, even if it doesn't come. Even on days when I'm not working, I'm working. Wow. Yeah. Even on days when I'm not working, I'm working. When you see me post the movies that I'm watching, I'm actually working. You just don't see it. You think I'm watching movies, I'm mm -hmm. working. Um, so consistency, discipline, working hard, bro, working hard, because um, without that, you have nothing. Um, you can't leave anything to chance. If you do want to stay consistent in this game, if you do want to still have a Kings of Jover or a Silverton Siege next year or this year mm. or five years from now, you have to put in the work because you can't just, for instance, maybe put in the work for a project and think after this project, things are just going to be yeah. smooth sailing. Yeah. Doors do open up, but you still, there's competition, bro. Okay. Uh, does your job end at submitting the script or do you work with the directors to make sure the stories, uh, that they stay faithful to the, to, to the story? All right. First of all, it's not a job. It's not a <laughs> job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's never been a job. I don't wake up, go to my job. I, I don't wake up and go to work. Yeah. Um, I wake up happy going to create a story because it's what I love. It's my passion, man. I go to play, bro. I go to the playground. Um, I go to the toy store, basically, and I create. I become God in a sense because I can play with characters that will come to life, and I can direct them into doing certain things. So, but in terms of um, carrying out what I do from writing stuff on paper and then having it as a script transcend to a set or to a director absolutely all the time um, not a lot of people have that privilege but I really would encourage people to have that mindset or mentality because a lot of story and a lot of your thoughts as a writer or as a creator gets kind of diluted along the way by other creatives or other people that will take your stuff forward um, I've had a lot of um, interactions with directors coming on set being like, yo man, I read your script last night. I actually didn't have to do any work because you were directing for me. Yeah. You told my cameraman where to be. Um, this is your oh, so show. You, you, you because like to I, add yeah, extra detail. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And they told me in the beginning that you shouldn't do that. But mm. I wanted my vision. Mm. You know, uh, um, 
to come across come, yeah. the way I wanted it to. So I'm a stubborn motherfucker, man. Uh, that's how I did it. That's so cool. Yeah. You're, you're one of the very few that actually do that. Yeah, yeah, like that yeah taps absolutely. Taps into that, um, that mindset of the, okay? Oh, yeah. Interesting. Uh, what advice would you give to young aspiring actors uh, who want to break, sorry, not actors, young aspiring scriptwriters who want to break into the industry? Uh, let me see. First, not every writer that you DM is going to give you a deal. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I get a lot of DMs and a lot of messages, you know. Yeah. Um, and I do appreciate it, but it takes a lot more than that. And I also had to learn that the hard way or the long way. Um, the first form of advice would be to put in the hours to put in the hours you've heard of that i don't know what, what is that book yeah, the 10, the 10, 10 hours, hours yeah yeah okay not literally ten thousand hours I, w- I would say not literally ten thousand hours but you got to put in the work man mm. you got to put in the graveyard shifts you ha- mm. have to be passionate about it you have to be hungrier than anybody else because mm. everybody wants to be a writer yeah everybody wants to be a director everybody wants to act um and make it right they see me and they think oh that's what a writer is supposed to be. I love that. I really do love that. But most writers are not even like me. Mm. Most writers don't drive the whips that I drive or earn the money that I make or mm. have the deals that I have. I've never written for like a, 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 a telenovela or a soap. I've never been a staff writer. I've always been independent, but I make more money than all of them. Mm. You know what I mean? So I had to do that the hard way because I put in the work. And I believed in myself. So you got to put in the work, the hours. And within those hours, the belief will come. Mm. Once you have a certain level of skill and ability, then things will kind of develop for you. Doors will open for you. And having the mindset of belief and manifestation as well. I'm I'm a huge uh, believer of the law of attraction, for instance. Um, number one with the law of attraction, man. That's my religion. No, mm. Law of attraction is my religion. Um, think and grow rich, for instance. One of the books that I um, really grew up on. I even got the tattoo here, you see? Damn. Think and grow rich. Yeah, I see. I see. The rich is in it's red. red yeah, yeah. yeah. It's kind of healing still, you see? Yeah. It's fresh. Is that a recent? It's a recent yeah, one. Yeah, yeah a okay. couple, couple weeks. Yeah. Um, the Secret, books like The Secret, you know, um, thinking things into existence. Uh, but it takes obviously more than that. It takes hunger and it takes action. The actual, exe- the message behind the law of attraction is you can think it. Once you believe it, though, you have to actually walk it. Yeah. You have to make those calls. You have to send in those scripts. Yeah. You have to do the interviews. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you have to have the, buy the cameras. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? And those things will start to unfold. So, mm. um, yeah, that's my best advice, man. This this thing is not easy. There's a lot. The competition is very thick. So you have to come prepared. It's just like anything else. If you want to be a musician, there's a lot of musicians. You want to be a rapper? There's a lot of rappers, yeah, bro. The game is competitive. It's competitive <laughs> as hell. Yeah. And it's you gotta outwork everybody. You gotta find yourself as well along the way, so that your sound or your perspective, your mind, your personality comes across. And at some point, without giving up, the doors will start okay, to yeah. open. Wow. Yeah. Well put. Well put. Thank you. Uh, what did your writing process for this season of Kings of Joburg look like? Uh, second time around or first time around? Uh, for the sec- second time around. Second oh, time let's around, go, yeah. yeah. Let's go. Actually, if you can just give us a summary of the first time yeah. and then a second time. By the way, for when we say first time and second time, yeah. it's because there was a first draft of it and then it had to be adapted, of course, after Uncle Show passed away. Yeah. So that's why we're saying the second time around. Yeah. yeah. So the, for the first time around, it was uh, a little bit easy sailing. Um, not under pressure, especially in the first couple of months. I was like just, you know, sending in drafts after like a, I'd write one episode and then send it after a month, you know, mm. after working on it, etc. But my process of writing was just looking at what we did in season one and trying to elevate. Um, I would, how my process goes is that 
I look at what I'm about to do in an episode um, and what I would like to see. Mm. But before I even get into writing, I kind of try to get into the zone of what this episode is about. So yeah. every episode for me is a theme, mm. has a theme, right? Or a subject mm. or a title. So if episode two, episode one is about this, is about love, then I would watch, for instance, movies about love and mix that with a few action films. Um, and then let my mind simmer, let me think about it for a little while and then go into it. Um, for instance, episode two was a heist yeah. episode. My favorite episode, by the way. Everybody's dude, favorite. Rocket launchers. Dude, you know what I had to do to dude, get that? Can we talk That's about my that best actually, fucking dude. episode, That bro. is my favorite episode. Action <laughs> all the way, bro. Dude, that was like my favorite. Just guns and testosterone. Ah. Hey, like the whole, um, <laughs> how, did, how did you come about with that? Hey? Like, where, yeah. where did that creativity stem from? Dude, so you know what I did, no? I was like, yo, we have to address... We, we episode, season one, the gold heist, the heist for the gold, yes, right? Yes, yes. We haven't done that. So I was talking to Shaw. I was like, yo, we need to do that in episode two, but mm-hmm. I want to do it like the whole episode. He's yeah. like, you're going to write a whole episode of like an action episode? I was like, yeah. dude, trust me, I got this. Fuck. And he's just like, <laughs> go ahead and done. <laughs> <laughs> and he left. I was like, all right, cool. So for two weeks after that, you know what I'm doing at home? Just I'm watching heist films for like about two weeks. By the way, that's my job. I'm not sitting at home <laughs> in my boxes. He's watching stuff. <laughs> drinking whiskey and Jägermeister. <laughs> watching Bad Boys 2 and 1 and old heist films. I am working. Yeah. So for anyone who thinks writers are not working when they're not working, you got it wrong. So I just took like two weeks or so. Um, watching movies, bro, like mm-hmm. watching heist films, and even going back. So I watched the the most influential was probably Heat, 1995, mm-hmm. directed by Michael Mann, the one with um, Al Pacino and Robert De Niro. God I've damn, bro. Yeah. yeah. So a few of those. Um, I even watched Inside Man. I watched uh, what else? What else did I watch? And yeah, man, I watched a lot of heist films. But at the end of the day, I was just studying that. And then I, third week, I started to write. So now, then I took about like three or four days to actually write episode two yeah. and just made it all about action from minute one to the end. Mm. And again, I think it's going to be a first, bro. It was just insane. When, when, when the, the Everything is just. And yeah, like, and by the way, the like the Eddie, gold, by the gold. way, I had to cut it down. Oh shit, there was more? There was more, dog. <laughs> It wasn't in budget, Big dog. When I saw them out, the trucks yeah. were like, oh, yeah. now they're confusing the cops. Okay, yeah. now they're chasing these yeah. two and they yeah. find that and there's yeah. no gold and the gold yeah. is there. You're like, like who ah. wrote this? I was like, fuck, this is good. No, well, of course, with this one, I knew. You're like, ah, subs. I was like, no, subs, subs, job. I speak, when I watch that, when I watch that, I speak, and I'm like, no, good subs. Even like with the cinematography, I'd be like, ah, Tiani, top job, Tiani, that's a good shot. Tiani's fucking dope, eh? Yeah, 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 he's, oh, wow, that's so cool. So, do you ever go through like a a writer's block? No, actually, I don't, man. I don't even believe in writer's block, bro. So, you never get like stuck, like, you just zone out, like, I don't know what the No, I, 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 not necessarily I don't get stuck, but I have never gotten writer's block. I do get stuck. And I don't like saying stuck. Mm. I like saying when there's nothing there. Yeah. There's, there's a place where, for instance, if there, I've, I've been in so many situations, for instance, shit, in three days I have to deliver episode yeah. mang mang or this amount of pages or this scene. Yeah. And it's still not coming to me. Yeah. And that's where uh, the talent part of and God or fate or uni- the universe comes in. Because every time when I've had a deadline for something, and for instance, the deadline, what's today? Today is Wednesday. Yeah. The, the deadline Friday. is Friday, and I still don't have a script. There were times, bro, I was in Sun City, bro. Yo, <laughs> Shana's calling me. Antoine, I need that script now. I'm like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't even slept, nigga. I'm turning up here, yeah. bro, you know? And I'm like, shit, okay, I gotta go. I left San City the next day, and I had a day, basically, to deliver a script, right? Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know where it's gonna come from, but I need the magic. I can't just write anything. It has to hit me. 
And when I say it has hit me, the magic has to come, bro. Yeah. It has to come. So like inspiration, the words, the scenes, yeah. how I view it has to hit me. So I always wait for it. Mm. I could be sitting here right now with you guys just chilling and be like, yo, as soon as I get home, I got to do that thing. But it, I was chilling last night and it didn't <laughs> hit me. You're going to do that. I don't know when it's going to hit me, but... <laughs> For some reason, it always just comes. But at it, least you're here to explore, you know, your creative yeah, freedom. Yeah, exactly. Like, home, and at like, some, yeah, you this. could say something. Yeah, you could say, literally yeah. say something, like outside or whatever. And I'll be like, fuck, that's a good idea. It hit me. And then, but it always comes. So and I always uh, appreciate, like, the universe. I appreciate mm, God because mm. I know that it doesn't just come from, like, nowhere. No way, it's yeah. not me, per se, you know? Yeah. It's, uh, my hard work is there, but... I know that this thing that I have is something that people call a talent, right? Mm. So it it does come to me always and never disappoints me. So when it hits, it hits. And then I'm like, okay, I got it. Mm. Then I just put it down. But I've never had something called writer's block because I always pitch up. Yeah. Um, Monday to Friday, I'm always in the office. If my office is downstairs, if I live here, it's downstairs, whatever it is, I'm Monday to Friday, I'm there. Yeah. And I have awkward hours, of course. I don't work during the day. I always work at night. So from like six onwards, you find me working at around three in the morning. I'm here, bro. I'm here. Some yeah. things won't make the cut. Some things will. Yeah. But I'm always there. So there's no writer's block. Writer's block is for people that are lazy. Writer's block are for people that wait for things to happen to them. Wait for that magic that I was talking about. I don't yeah. wait for that magic. That magic will come, but I'm, I'm always working. Yeah. Non-stop. So I've never had writer's block. I'll never have writer's block. And I'll always be number one. One. Nice. Uh, yeah. Five things to avoid when writing a film. A film film, a yeah. feature film. Yeah, feature film, yeah. Okay. Uh, let me think. Yeah, no worries. Take your time. Let me take my time, take my time. All right, cool. The first thing, dialogue. Dialogue. Yeah. Um, don't get too yappy. Don't, don't, don't let your characters talk too much in your dialogue. Um, second thing would be everything has to be precise. A film is very, it's a it's a graphic medium. Yeah. It's all about pictures. Yeah. It's not about talking. It's not about anything else. There will be talking in your your feature, but it's all about the action. Mm. Even if it's a, a, a romantic comedy, bro, it's all about what we see. Yeah. You know, and you know, features in a sense are, are much harder than series. Series, dude. <laughs> Yeah, bro. <laughs> what? Dude, you only listen listen to this. You only have about not even 120. 120 is too long. Mm. That's two hours. In South Africa, most of 90. productions give you about 90, bro. Mm. So you've got 90 pages, most of it is white. Mm. To actually produce a long a, a full story. Yeah. Right? And 90 pages is actually nothing. Like I could literally write 90 pages. What's the time now? If it's two o'clock now. Probably by two in the morning. If I don't start, I you could do ninety. 90. Yeah, it Fuck might it, it might it. not it, it might not be whatever. You, but I'm saying you can write that much. Yeah, bro. And literally, I've what, been doing this in, since in, I was in, a kid, in bro. In like twelve hours, you can literally damn, bro. Jeez, yeah. fucking up. I've been Jesus. doing this since I was a kid, bro. <laughs> really? Yeah, bro. I've been, but I was Whoa. also very lucky, dog. Um, one thing I actually missed. I'm telling you, Eddie. When I was about seventeen, no, eighteen. Hmm. Right, going into varsity. I was at Tux, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, University of Pretoria. Uh, now I'm doing economics, right? And second year, I think I decided I'm dropping out. I'm going to do this writing thing. Hmm. Now, when I did this writing thing, my dad was like, what, what are you talking about? You're dropping out to do what? I can you imagine. Crazy? Yeah, you know? I can imagine. Yeah. And once I dropped out, but he was like, okay, cool. I can see that you're passionate about it. He saw the first book. Blah, blah, blah. He's like, okay, cool. Listen, if you're going to be doing this thing, I'm going to give you a certain amount of time to make it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He gave me, I think, three years, four years or something like that. And he said the hours during the day where people go to work or go to varsity, 
you must dedicate then i want to see you doing what you say you're what doing you, yeah, yeah. So, which means writing and reading Fuck. so Shoot every day dad man yeah man shout out pops jeez he knows what it is man wow, so yeah. every day four so, hours writing four hours reading every single day without fail so that's where i also grew the discipline mm. other writers at that time either they're at work or they're going to school they're doing it part time yeah that's how i developed faster than of the game yeah because of the discipline that i had and even till today i carry that discipline out With so you, yeah. i i take it like i don't write when i feel like writing i write like you go to work on monday monday i'm working as well mm. You know what I'm saying? Damn, it's incredible, man. Yeah, man. But yeah, I think I think let's wrap it up there. Yeah. Um, just you know the time perspective. Of course. Um, but yo, subs, thanks so much, man, for joining. I um, appreciate today. you, Like brother. I honestly appreciate you coming through. Thank you so much. You know much, how bro. difficult it is to get like. Yeah. Eh, hey, these superstars. <laughs> eh, hey, hey, my man, it's, it's hard. Eh. The stuff, bro. <laughs> it's the only people that we like wanted to interview and they yeah. said yes, and then come the day they just don't pitch. They don't pitch hey, up, yeah. Man. And they yeah. don't understand that like things cost, man. Like you know. You of course, bro. Go to, oh, it's, yeah. it's a lot. It's a yeah. lot. So, but thanks so much for coming through, man. Really appreciate it. I really appreciate um, you guys for having me, man. And I know in a few years Lovely, we'll bro. definitely have you back. Of course, you know we've wanted to grow bigger. Platform, come on, you know? come on. Um, and that would yeah. be amazing to have you, you know, explore more of your shows that are coming in the future. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks so I much. I appreciate it, guys. Yeah. Twenty seventh January. Yeah. Kings of Joburg season two, written by your boy. Everything written by your boy. Yeah. Let's go. And where can people find you? Um, um instagram man um subs the movie writer yeah. um facebook as well yeah yeah awesome right thank guys. you so much bro um yeah it's been a pleasure thank you for coming appreciate um, you guys and yeah guys please remember to like comment and subscribe and peace out